Hi, this is Chris from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from Political Voices Network. Hiya, Bob. I, I love that you open every time now doing the double handy J Donald Trump dance. Yes. Yeah. And I do it for a second until I start to become nauseous, and then I stop. <laughs> Did you see someone just... Someone photoshopped uh, Putin and Kim Jong-un in there, and they're like, how Trump's going to oh, get the money? Yes, yes. <laughs> And someone made little cartoon phalluses on one of them, just a whole compilation, which is yes. endlessly entertaining. In fact, someone tried to credit me for doing that. And yeah. I said, well, no, I haven't animated anything in 10, 15 years. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, it's I your would level. love to take credit for something like that. It's your just... level of immaturity, I must say. I yes, exactly. Thought that. Yeah, 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 yeah. As At 52 years old, I was sitting here drawing cartoon penises on Donald Trump dancing footage that's what i spent no i didn't do that i didn't do the cartoon penis thing so sorry all right well you yeah. can't do everything bob all right i know uh, <laughs> yeah you t- you tweeted even trump's fanboys knows he's a fraud who will never be- pay back a loan for any amount much less a half a billion dollars um and i love yeah. all these mark levin and larry cudler people whining about why would his rich friends pay? why would his rich friends pay you said larry cudlow personally asked kevin o'leary to loan trump the 464 million bond uh in order to protect america's name think of it that way o'leary never answers i mean yeah I, it's it is so ridiculous first of all they know this is why he's in the street he never pays anything back right. <laughs> Right. Oh, of course not. Of course right. not. Anyone who lends Donald Trump money, it doesn't matter whether it's a dollar or half a billion dollars. That's one of those things where he's going to take the money. He's going to just go yoink and run off with the money. And then, you know, a few years later when you were like, well, OK, he hasn't paid any of this back. What's going on? And they sue Donald Trump for repayment. That's where he settles on with pennies on the dollar. That's Char- his in Every we all had time. that friend. Yeah, we had one. You know, yeah. uh-huh. you'll know who it is. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. A long time ago. Yeah. But I'm like everyone used to go. You'll never see it again. Oh. She'll never pay. You. Oh, Char- <laughs> Charles Gasparino. Yeah. Charles Gasparino on Fox <laughs> Business Channel yesterday yeah. said exactly that. Want to hear yes, it? Please. All right. Generally, yeah. Donald has doesn't have a great record at paying back banks over the years, and uh, Donald Trump. So you uh, you know you can sort of surmise from that what you what you will. But if you think about it, he has friends or did. Like Steve Schwartzman over at BlackRock, he has, uh, you know, Tom Barrick, the hedge fund billionaire. I mentioned Bernie, uh, Howie Lorber. I mean, go down the list. You got to ask yourself why they're not throwing him some bucks now. You know, lending him some money. Now, do you think Ivanka has an out of office reply, or <laughs> does, has she done the new yeah. phone who dis? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right. Yeah, uh, Jared and Ivanka are screening right now. Yeah. They're, they've gone off to a place where there's no cell service uh, because they don't want to get that yeah. phone call. When even your uh, even because... your evil grifty children won't help you with your latest grift, you know it's the the gigs up. <laughs> well, I think they hate that they right. lost their social status in in Manhattan society. Yeah, yeah. and there's no inheritance. Yeah. Ha ha. If they were really mean to, if Ivanka was really mean to her dad, yeah. she would go swimming in all the money like Scrooge McDuck <laughs> yeah. and send like a camera phone video to Donald of her swimming in all that money. Whoops. Sorry, dad. You can't, all that hectoring you've done to me about story. my looks uh-huh. and whatever. Yeah. yeah. God, I can't even imagine that. But uh, yeah, that's, I, I, I hope they're kind of like dangling that money over his head and saying, hey. What are you going to do for us? I mean, and, I, is, am I the only one that, the, again, this seems like the biggest, dumbest movie plot ever, that, of course, Russia's going to swoop in at the last minute, that that's why he's, you know, going through this public humiliation, and, oh, 30 companies said no, yeah. and, you know, I, I, I'm desperate. I mean, good Well, God. that's where I, I think I, I wish I were, I were more of a legal expert when it came to New York state law, because my question, we were talking about this on my show yesterday, is uh, – does Donald Trump have to report where he got the money? I know when you yes, uh, apply what... for a mortgage loan, well, for example, Suzanne... they want to know where you yeah. got the down payment. They Suzanne... say, well, did you borrow it from your parents or whatever? Suzanne Craig on, on Rachel said that, Bob, that, you know, yeah. that she thinks, yes, that there will be transparency. But again, would you predict anything that's happened in Trump and Trump world in the last five years? I don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's and that's the other problem. That's the secondary problem. And we're making trouble for ourselves here. But. You know, if the money can't, comes from Oleg Deripaska, for example, right. one of the Russian oligarchs who was just ensconced in everything Trump-Russia, if it comes from Oleg Deripaska, 
once again, as you were saying at the top of the show, Stephanie, that's going to get a, a New York Times headline on page A18 and get forgotten about after a couple of days. Yeah. That's the tragedy of what we're experiencing right now. And it's a, it, astonishing to me that the press can't keep up with the fire hose of news after having so much yeah. practice going back to 2015. They just can't do it. They I mean, don't know how to report on Donald Trump. And now we're talking about a very serious national security threat in the form of all of this debt that Donald Trump is carrying. And it's every horrible sequel ever made, right? You're like, Paul no. Manafort? Right. <laughs> really? This really is, you know, Batman. That's your specialty. Like, literally all the Batman villains that have been in prison. Arkham yeah. Asylum. He's going to let them all out. And, and Paul, Russian money launderer Paul Manafort will be in charge. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, dear God. I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, Paul Manafort's part of all the stuff that the press is actively yada, yada, yadaing from Donald Trump's first term as president yeah. prior to COVID. Yeah. It's like, for some reason, it's either we're yada, yada, yadaing COVID or yada, yeah. yada, yadaing everything else that happened under Donald Trump. It's so on and brand. It's wrong. It's yeah. so on brand yeah. for Trump 2024, Bob, that a felon who can't vote. <laughs> would be running Trump's <laughs> campaign. I mean, it's... it's yeah, yeah. And as you said, it's Trump's, what, Trump's once, once said he's worth $9 billion. If that were true, which it's not, he wouldn't need to whine about having to pay up. He could pay it and still be worth eight point eight and a half billion. but he's a liar, he's a fraud, and he's broke, which is why you said I love this story. I have to say, Bob, we have to give ourselves time to enjoy every moment of his humiliation. <laughs> this is, yes, as yes. I keep saying, the penniless part of the penniless in prison. <laughs> Right. Part of right, the plan. Because they're they're coming at the main thing about Donald Trump. The thing that he prides himself in the centerpiece yep. of the Donald Trump myth is that he's some sort of successful businessman who's attained all of this wealth on his own savvy and pluck. And he's been able to do this and he's got nine billion dollars and it's all the very best properties and all the greatest ideas. Yeah. And he's got so much cash. He says, I got all the cash. And cash. And it's, well, yeah, that's, it, we uh, played that soundbite to open. That's that's the original campaign lie. Right. I don't need yeah. anybody's money. I'm very rich. I'm going to pay. All, I, I'm gonna, I can finance it myself. He never used any of his own cash. He didn't. No. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, oh, she not. just she's trying to take my money so I don't have it to spend on my campaign. You've never having spent it on your campaign. Yeah, you yeah. didn't have well, it. Yeah, and that's part of the thing driving his debt right now is that he doesn't want to use his own money. I think what he's trying to do is he's kind of playing a game of chicken with yeah. what happens on Monday. Like, okay, I don't want to use my own money, so I'll see if I can come up with some sort of surety company to provide the bond, or maybe someone's going to loan me money, but I sure as hell am not going to sell off anything. But yeah. you know what? On the other hand, I don't think he can sell off anything. I think his properties are leveraged to the hilt. I think he's got tax liens. I think he's yeah. got uh, properties already down as collateral in order yeah. to cover the previous Chubb loan, the Chubb bond from the uh, E. Jean Carroll case. So this is all fun. I'm just, I, you know, you can't see it. It's off camera. I'm sorry, the company, TV, but... the company with the rape trial was, uh, it's named, I'm sorry, Bob, Chubb. Oh yeah, Chubb. No, I wasn't gonna. Yeah. They do have an award show every year. They do give out Chubbies. Chubbies. We yeah. did cover that. They give out Chubbies. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah. Bob. Well, I'm just pumping the story intravenously into my system <laughs> because it is so enjoyable to listen to uh, to watch Donald Trump stressing out about again the one thing that is the central the the nut of Donald Trump's myth. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah I, I yeah. hope this is reaching the people it needs to reach, that this guy wants to be the steward of our economy. Yeah. And he can't even organize his own finances. Once again, I mean, we've had yeah. countless examples in the past, but now it's happening in real time where the guy's accumulated half a billion dollars in debt for starters. I mean, we could be looking at upwards of a billion dollars that he owes people after all is said and done, after all the civil trial. There are more lawsuits happening in, in, Wa in Washington, D.C. Yeah. regarding January 6th. There's the possibility of a maybe a hundred million dollar tax liability coming yeah. out of these audits. And so, my God, do we really want to have a commander in chief oh. who is that heavily leveraged with debt yeah. and all the people or entities that he would be beholden to as president? What, what would Donald Trump's priority then be? Them or the, you know, the national treasury? Yeah. I mean, I it's, already think he's going to be like, Don, yeah. he, he wants to be like Vladimir Putin. He wants to be a kleptocrat. Yeah. He wants to just pillage the national treasury oh, for yeah. his own wealth. 
and to pay back all his just, debts. Just like he's doing to the RNC. I mean, it's it's <laughs> yeah. I, you can smell his desperation, can't you? It's just just a mix of I don't know, bronze, right, right. Well, bronzer, the, and the RNC and poopy the... diaper, and just I mean, it's Monday. It's Monday. It's in a few days, and you know. Yeah. I by yeah. the way, you said uh, yes. Everyone says bloodbath, but he's the only one ever to end the pr- peaceful transfer of power by inciting his militias to fight like hell at the Capitol. He also orders his fans to knock the crap out of protesters, threaten bedlam. Uh, removed from the ballots. I mean, give me a break with the media yeah. giving him any benefit of the doubt about context. It's like, yes, he was talking about the audio industry, but then it, he obviously expanded it beyond that. He said that'll be right. the least of it. It'll be a bloodbath for the country. You know, I mean, give me a break. Mm-hmm. How does he deserve any context, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the context has to be the broader context of who he is and what he represents, things that he said in the past. He ta- I mean, famously on January 6th, he told his militias to go down to the Capitol and fight like hell. Yeah. He's talked about if he's removed from any ballots, it's going to be bedlam. He's repeatedly talked about, about knocking the crap yeah. out of protesters. How about take the mags away? They're not here to hurt me. Yeah. Well, the, uh, implied is they're here to hurt other people <laughs> that I want them to hurt, but not me. I mean, it's it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is who he is, and to remove that context is a bigger travesty than uh, you know not mentioning the fact that he was talking about the auto industry, which, by the way. He didn't say it was going to be a bloodbath for the auto industry. Right. He said it was going to be a bloodbath for, for the, the country. country. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. To be um, clear yeah. about that. Yeah. 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 Um, it, by the way, you were saying you and JoJo from Jersey, who, by the way, you were on each other's shows, which just could just. Oh, God. It's my favorite circle. three-way. Yeah. Oh, God. I just was fantastic. Yeah. Um, she's had a great time with JoJo. Yeah. <laughs> she's fantastic. I mean, you're both just. Uh, okay. And also eye candy. Sorry. But uh, you were saying that you guys were talking about that you feel like we need to like almost go individually and tap every single person on the shoulder in the country or on oh, Twitter yeah. and go, you don't seriously, you don't, you don't remember what four years ago, what's <laughs> like, I mean, I, there's somebody, this yeah. oh, you, uh, Joe Trippi at the headline, the post uh, COVID a Phoenix economy is an economic miracle. And you said not a miracle, competent stewardship of the economy. I mean, mm-hmm. there is no barometer by which we are not. A billion times better now than we were when Donald Trump was in office, right? My God, incredibly so, yeah, and objectively so. I mean, the the fact that there's any sort of question as to whether or not we were better off four years ago than we are right now is absurd. I mean, it only comes down to whatever the red hats are screaming and whatever the enablers in the political press will, however they'll report about that. Other than that, if you were to take a, a look at the objective metrics of where we were in March of 2020 versus where we are right now, it's not even it, this shouldn't even be a conversation. But the fact of the matter is that we, we we frustratingly have faced this national amnesia where you go back far enough. Maybe it's the fire hose of news. Maybe it's the lack of comprehensive coverage or maybe it's too much of the press reporting on what people think rather than what is that is the problem but uh i i don't know what causes this but it seems like something as indelible as the four years the four-year nightmare of donald trump you think people wouldn't forget that you think people wouldn't forget the mass graves in new york city or the refrigerated trucks behind hospitals behind morgues or the fact that we were wiping our butts with coffee filters all the way down we couldn't buy toilet paper we couldn't buy paper towels we couldn't buy masks we couldn't buy hand sanitizer couldn't buy bottled water all of that was out of the question, and that was under Donald Trump. Uh, on top of the economic calamity that he precipitated, four point, uh, it was 14.8% unemployment yeah. at that period of time. Nine million jobs lost in 2020, just vanished. Thanos snap, gone. And that was Donald Trump. Donald Trump was the Thanos snapping those yeah. jobs away. Let me yeah, do, we have to remember that. Let me do one get happy and one don't get happy, just for you, Bob. Okay, uh, Amy sure. Siskind uh, said in yesterday's primaries, one in five Republican voters voted against Trump in Arizona, Florida, Illinois, and Ohio, and about one quarter voted against him in Kansas. He is very vulnerable in November. Um, but the story I did earlier, I don't know if you heard it, to not get happy <laughs> is, uh, who is it, talking about, um, y- you know, if, if because of no labels or God knows what, you know, third party, if it's contested, it goes to the House. If we, if nobody yeah. gets to 270 electoral votes, I mean, talk about <laughs> you yeah, were, thank you uh, don't that. get happy, rumbly, tumbly, yeah. right? But it's yeah. just, but I'm sorry, it's just the playing grab ass with democracy, as you say, you know, the, oh, yeah. Yeah. the abandoned Biden campaign, and where was this Nevada, you know? And it, well, meanwhile, you, yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, I was going to say, well, the underlying problem the, in the discussion around RFK Jr. and who he was going to select as his running mate, the thing is, it doesn't matter whether it's Aaron yeah. Rodgers or some other person. The fact is that why is he even bothering? He's not going to get a single electoral vote out of all of this. RFK Jr. and Cornell West and whoever else is running as a third yeah. party candidate in November, all they're doing is potentially taking away votes for democracy. This is not just they're not just taking away votes from Joe Biden. They're taking votes away from American democracy, the Constitution, the rule of law, national security, the status of the economy, the stability yeah. of the globe. That's what they're taking votes away from. And they are not going to win a single state. They will not win a single precinct district, et cetera. Our nightmare and so is this the, is nothing but a. It's yeah, it's a seven, cynical cash grab. Right. Yeah. It's the 77,000 votes that Hillary lost those three swing states by by people that voted for Jill Stein. That's what yeah, our nightmare yeah. is. You know, so it, it's right. Anyway. And, well, and the one thing I, I want to mention here, too, is and I, I've said this on Twitter and it's time. It's time, folks. It's time to drop the the former guy thing. It's time to stop referring to Donald Trump as TFG or Drump oh. or whatever we're calling him today. I never knew him... what that stood for anyway. Is that what it was? The, the former, former guy. guy. I never the knew what that guy. was. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A... I mean, it was fine for a, a year or so as we all recovered from the nightmare of the Trump presidency. But now he's the Republican yeah. nominee. Exactly. He's, yeah. he's running to destroy democracy and elevate fascism in this country. And it's time to call him by his actual name. Right. See also previous remarks about national amnesia. People need to remember yes. what he is and what he's all about. And you can't do that by referring to him as some obscure liberal acronym. Right. Exactly. Which for some right. reason, we always do that. We always go to acronyms yeah. on the left. And no, and it confuses yeah. everybody. Yep. Just use his actual name. Exactly. Call him Donald if you need to. Wow. Mary Trump's rule. Do that. Uh, well, and I am a, guy, a deep state liberal that. that didn't even know what that stood for. So, yeah, yeah. I, show you. I, I am 100 percent with you, Bob. Yeah. I, I've always yeah. hated these cutesy little I knew nicknames you would be, for him. Chris. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Sexyliberal.com is where you find Bob Seska. And I do find him every week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going I'm going I'm going hiking with you embedded in my ears in about an hour or so. Bob. <laughs>